<clears throat> roller coasters. They twist, they flip, they dive, and they make us scream with joy and terror and everything in between. And well, the only exception right here is if you are a roller coaster or theme park enthusiast, then you are used to these forces. And the biggest question today is what makes these rides truly unforgettable? What's the secret little sauce behind a loop that leaves you breathless or a drop that steals your stomach? And well, today I'm diving head first into the world of roller coaster elements, those individual parts that turn steel and wood into to pure adrenaline. We are breaking down what makes them tick, how they are built for maximum thrill and the genius behind their designs. And now let's find out how these rides walk the tight rope between mind-blowing excitement and rock solid safety. And this is a warm welcome to the most thrilling engineering class you have ever taken and also the most basic one. And well, as some of us already know, behind every roller coaster is a team of brilliant minds. We got the engineers, designers, physicists, and thrill seekers who combine science with storytelling. And now all these different people are in for a great challenge because they need to create something very dangerous that feels dangerous also, but it needs to be completely safe. And now the biggest question I need the answer to is how are they going to do that? And this is where designers calculate every twist and turn down to the millimeter. And now to the American viewers, we need to say every inch of this track. And one of the most important things that designers need to consider are the G-forces. And this is where we need to focus on what the average human can tolerate in terms of G-forces. And this is where we need to talk about the difference between positive and negative G-forces on a roller coaster. And this is where the positive g-forces can shortly be described as how strong your body gets pushed down in the seat and this is where you can expect to experience many strong positive g-forces pulling out of a big drop or going through many different inversions and on the other side we have the negative g-forces and this is where you can experience that stomach dropping feeling in your tummy tummy and you can typically experience negative g-forces when you go over the first big drop on many airtime hills on different roller coasters and this is where you can feel the roller coaster train pulling you down giving that strong out of your seat moment like you're floating and there are also many other great factors they need to think about when designing a roller coaster such as structural integrity the roller coaster track and supports needs to stand there for several years without getting damaged and that also means that design needs to survive very bad weather such as extreme heat or extreme cold and also very strong winds and most importantly the design needs to withstand a very heavy roller coaster train and these roller coaster trains can be quite heavy depending on the size of the roller coaster train these trains can weigh up to 30 tons total and that means these roller coaster trains have the same weight as four to six adult elephants and now that's a lot of weight if you ask me and that also means the designers can't really make the craziest roller coaster in the world because they have to think about human tolerance and even the emotional pacing of the ride many of these coasters need to build suspense deliver payoffs and leave you grinning or gasping at the end but then without exceeding the average human tolerance. And just imagine a ride on a roller coaster that maybe lasts a minute or two. The design process, it can take years. It's precision engineering meets psychological warfare in the best way possible. So let's talk about elements. These are the building blocks of every roller coaster. We got the loops, the corkscrews, the airtime hills, the drops. Each one is designed to manipulate your body and your brain. And now just imagine, one second you're floating out of your seat like an astronaut, the next you're plastered into the chair with 4G's pinning you down. It's like a mixtape of extreme sensations. And now just take a look at this quick compilation of the different elements you can experience on a roller coaster. Well, there are really a lot of them and let's break a few of them down now. Well, I have already mentioned the different kinds of airtime hills before when we talked about G-forces. And these are the ones that give you that weightlessness floating sensation, also known as negative Gs. And the best example of airtime hills are on the roller coaster model called Hypercoaster, made by the Swiss manufacturer called BM, also known as Bollinger Mabillard. 
These hyper coasters are really big and they are known for having these out and back roller coaster layer where you just go through big airtime hill after big airtime hill. And this is where the riders can experience several seconds of airtime on these big airtime hills. And now let's talk about inversions and there are really many different kinds of inversions but the most traditional ones are the vertical loops and corkscrews. And these elements are supposed to disorientate your sense of direction and give you that head rush of oh wait which way is up. And while many of these inversions focus on strong positive g-forces where you can feel your body getting pushed strongly back into your seat. And well apart from the corkscrew and vertical loop there are many other kinds of inversions. We got the dive loop, we got the Emelman, we got the zero g stall and so on. And while many of these roller coasters also need to feature some filler elements that aren't really important in terms of the ride layout. And these are mostly just different banked twists and turns and straight track that keeps the pacing up. And one of the most important things about a roller coaster is the start. And this is where we got that first drop. That iconic stomach dropping moment is often the most powerful thrill of them all and a great way to start a roller coaster. And another cool way to start a roller coaster is the first launch. And this is where most modern roller coasters utilize electromagnets to push the train with a great speed. And now let's quickly take a look at one of the most revolutionary roller coaster models ever created and that is the inverted coaster. And now let's go all the way back to 1992 and this is where Six Flags and the manufacturer B&M debuted Batman the Ride, the first coaster to flip the traditional setup. Instead of riding on the track, riders were suspended below it. And that meant the legs were dangling, the feet were flying and the heads were spinning. And with this one innovation, the entire roller coaster experience changed suddenly riders felt like they were flying, loops became more intense because the forces hit differently, turns were tighter and the visuals way more dramatic. And the inverted coaster sparked a whole new category of rides because inverted coasters became the norm in major parks and soon after we got flying coasters, wing coasters, even spinning suspended trains. And the overall design with the train hanging under the track kicked open the door to new ways of thinking about gravity and direction. Well, 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 since then, innovation has never slowed down. Roller coasters now launch from 0 to 60 in 2 seconds using magnets. Some spin 360 degrees while navigating a full layout. Others dive off clips, hang you over vertical drops, or flip you backwards mid-ride. It is safe to say that many modern roller coasters are becoming quite complex and very unpredictable in terms of roller coaster layout and elements. And that also means there's a lot of competition between the different manufacturers in the roller coaster industry. And many of the modern roller coasters can combine many different and special track elements into the layout. You can really experience very complex roller coasters out there in the world. Many of these can feature different launches, forwards launches, backwards launches, rolling launches, chain lifts, switch tracks, drop tracks and so on. One of the most impressive roller coasters in the world right now is Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure at Islands of Adventure in Florida. This roller coaster combines an immersive Harry Potter theming with expensive animatronics, 7 total launches, a stall, a drop track and a backwards section. That also comes with a $300 million price tag. And now if you look at a modern thrill coaster you can really see that these roller coaster layouts are getting quite creative. Many of the newer thrill coasters feature many bizarre elements such as zero g stalls, wave turns and outer bank airtime moments. Every element on a roller coaster tells a part of a story. The slow climb builds the anticipation. That first drop, it's the explosion. The twist, the loops, the rolls, they are the emotional highs and lows. And by the time you hit the break run, you have gone through a whole journey in under two minutes. And well, it's no accident. Every curve is intentional. Every force you feel has a purpose. The best roller coasters aren't just the thrill machines. They are experiences carefully crafted, endlessly tested and designed to blow your mind. <laughs> and now I finally said what I wanted to say in this video. If you really like roller coaster or theme park videos like these, please consider subscribing to the channel. That would be awesome. And now at the end of the day, I'm always gonna say bye bye.